Hey there, happy Tuesday. Tonight we are going to be finishing up our Aurifil block of the month for July. We have a little bit more of the, that embroidery to do and then we'll be done. So thank you guys for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together uh, for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so again, tonight, you guys, we are finishing up my Aurifil block of the month. It is Tuscany. This is the block that I designed for this project. So the Aurifil block of the month has 12 different designers uh, making blocks uh, for the Aurifil Thread Company. And be sure to post your finished uh, your finished block over on the Aurifil blog. There'll be instructions there. Uh, you will have a chance to win some of their thread and it's awesome. So uh, be sure to do that. Some of their color builders thread. All right, you guys, let's work on this embroidery. I'm excited to finish it up today. And then tomorrow we'll be starting the embroidery, the penguin and fish embroidery of the month. And this month it is our fabric only uh, it's our fabric scissors <laughs> and it has this pretty floral handle and uh, if you get the bundle for it uh, you also get uh, my new embroidery floss and it has uh, 23 different skeins and they're cute little mini mini skeins so I call them pocket skeins they're half the size of a normal skein so they're perfect for small projects uh, there's 23 total so you get that with the bundle and I also have my fabric only mugs as well. So if you're interested in that, uh, that's also in the embroidery of the month section of the shop. So tomorrow we're going to be starting that. And uh, yeah, we'll be working on that for about a week. And uh, I'm excited. That'll be fun. So thanks, you guys. Let's get going. Okay, here we are. I still have the pattern up. So the pattern is free over on the Aurifil website. So I just have it up just for a tiny peek at the stitches if I if I need to. Alrighty. So here is mine. I still really love the colors that we chose for the fabric and everything. Uh, I just have this little strip left to do of my single chain stitches. And uh, that's, that's the deal. Uh, I am leaving a quarter inch on the edge here and on the bottom just because that's going to get sewn into the quilt so it's really going to end up being you know more like more like this so I just want to make sure that I'm far enough away so I don't accidentally like sew into my into my stitches so all right you guys let's finish this up I have used almost a full uh eight meter skein of floss so like a full um DMC thing of floss. I'm using that, that 554 number. Uh, this is it. This is the last bit of floss from my first skein. Uh, I did recommend two skeins uh, for this project just because you might be cutting it super duper close like I am here. I'm hoping I can, I can finish it with just this one skein. Then I'll have that extra one as a freebie for later. All right, so I have six strands. I'm going to separate it up into the three. So just uh, isolating the one strand and yanking it out of there. Oof, this is a little, <laughs> again, I've been using kind of long thread for this project, longer than I usually do. Usually I only take like 24 inches or so. I've been a little greedy with um, the length of my floss um, with this project, just because these stitches do take up a lot of floss. Uh, and it's annoying to keep getting new floss, but typically I, I don't want to use that much. All right, I'm just paging through your comments. So nice to see you. Oh, <laughs> Robin says, cute blouse. This is, um, this is a shirt I stole from, from John. <laughs> it was a little too small for him, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wear that as, a, as an oversized uh, <laughs> little button-up shirt. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. 
All right, so let's match up these ends. And I am gonna keep using this thread conditioner. That's been really working well for me uh, with this, with even this embroidery floss. I was kind of wary about using it for embroidery floss, but a couple of you guys said that um, you've used thread conditioner with embroidery floss before. As uh, so I thought, eh, we'll give it a try on this project. And, I, and I'm probably gonna use it from now on. Uh, it is really kind of fun. So what it does is it, it, it holds the thread together a little bit better and it, it's reducing, um, it's definitely reducing how many knots uh, it gets tied into along the way. Like it's, there's less frizz and everything too. So maybe you can handle these long, these long strands that I'm using a little bit better. Oh, you know what? I think this might be my favorite one. I wasn't sure when I first uh, smelled this one. I mean, I, I liked it immediately. I didn't know if it would, I thought my the other ones for sure would be my favorite, but I think this is it. It, it has a, it's um, it's called Rainfall. And these are all by Wisecraft Handmade. Uh, so, and that's Blair Stocker. We've done a bunch of her projects here before. Uh, so she has these thread conditioners now. Um, it's the Huga uh, smell. Uh, this one's Rainfall. And then Earl Grey is her other one. And really all three are great. Uh, my favorite thing about it is that it just, when you stitch, you can smell it. And it, it's the, it just is like, it feels like you're doing something special. <laughs> uh, so I, I really like that um, Rainfall one. It's kind of like a, like a light, pretty pine scent almost. Uh, it just smells really Christmassy. I like it. Ugh. Okay, so I have the needle threaded. I'm just going to weave into the backs of these stitches and we'll be uh, ready to go again. I'm not doing any knots. I'm just uh, weaving, weaving in the ends. So how is everyone doing today? I'm excited to work on the embroidery of the month tomorrow. It's been a weird month because uh, we've been kind of focused on the Orofill block of the month as far as the schedule goes. Uh, this is this is my block, so we wanted to I wanted to stitch it right away uh, when it was released. Um, but typically, we would have been stitching the embroidery of the month already. So uh, it's I'm feeling weird that we haven't started it yet. So I'm I'm um, I'm stoked for tomorrow, and we're starting it midweek too, which is a little a little different than normal as well. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. Oh yes, Robin. Robin says it's our aromatherapy. That is a great way of thinking about um, these these thread conditioners. I mean, it is nice as a thread conditioner because it is kind of keeping my threads together, and I really haven't had any knots uh, this whole time, which has been amazing. I mean, that's that's nice. I'm not even thinking about it about like you know being gentle, so I don't get knots. I'm just pulling it right through, although, you know, I'm talking about a whole lot of knots, so hopefully I'm not jinxing myself right now. Um, but yeah, just the smell, it it's just it smells amazing. It does make you feel like you're doing something extra special for yourself. Uh, so yeah, I know a bunch of you ordered ordered it, and that's, that's amazing. Um, uh, it's always nice to order from small makers. Small makers like Blair and, and me and um, a lot of other quilty, crafty people. We appreciate it for sure. But yeah, this really is kind of a fun little luxury. There's other thread conditioners that don't really have a smell. It's just kind of like beeswax. Um, this is, I think, uh, beeswax plus some coconut oil and some flavory oil. It's yums. But yeah, you guys, when you, when you guys get it, you'll have to um, let me know what you think too. And I know we talked about a few other thread conditioners, a few other companies, so I might still check some of them out. And I like, um, I like the size of these. I can just, 
I feel like I can just keep it with a project. Um, like if I'm doing more than one embroidery project or more than one like hand stitching project or something, I can just keep one with it. So if I got more uh, from like different, oh, Rebecca likes Thread Heaven. So I'll, I'll have to look at that yet. Isn't that the one that they're not making anymore though? The, there's one that the company isn't around anymore. Is that the Thread Heaven? I'll have to look for that because I know a lot of people have mentioned mentioned the Thread Heaven. So I will check that out as well. But like I was saying, I think um, they're nice and small enough that I can keep one with each project. So having extra, I think, is not going to be a problem at all. All right, here we go. So I have some fabric. I mean, I don't, it's not gonna take a whole hour, I don't think, to finish this little area here. It, it has been taking a while to stitch up these big strips, but um, if we do get done with this early, which I suspect we will, I'd like to, I'd like to do some cutting prep. I have been uh, um, doing that leader and ender project for a while, and I'll show you. I'll show you that project in a bit here. Um, but I need to cut more fabric for it. Uh, it's it's that project that I just work on when I'm working on other projects. So basically, the the leaders and enders. So like these little bits that I put in my sewing machine beforehand or like when I sew and I just keep collecting those little threads on there so instead of doing that um, I've been let's see hold on I have my bin bin of them here I've been uh, cutting up um, squares so I had this is just from old clothes so I've been cutting up squares and instead of ending my piece on a little on a little piece of fabric like this I'll sew uh, I'll sew one of these squares instead so I'll sew one side and then then later when I have to take something else off the machine I'll sew the other side so I'll just have a bin of these near nearby and what I've been doing is by sewing on two sides of a diagonal I can actually make a couple half square triangles out of it and uh, I've been trimming, trimming them occasionally. So here's a couple done ones. So this is all a pile of sewn squares ready to trim. And uh, I'm out of, I'm out of my light color. So I try and do a light and a dark color. Uh, so my light color is just, I think it's an old blanket or something. Um, this, this white with a dot and then the dark color is just whatever else I have. Um, so I have a, I have a few darks left, but no light color. So I thought I'd um, cut some of that. But I've been sewing all those half squared triangles into these blocks. Uh, so eventually, I'm gonna have like a quilt out of recycled uh, fabric here from clothes from doing nothing. Um, it's just literally like instead of using one of these leaders, I'll just sew a little square. But that has really, like, I'm getting piles of blocks from from that like I already have I have like all of these blocks made from just other sewing projects so I, I literally haven't worked on this except for on other sewing projects at least for the making of these squares so I, I would love to cut more fabric for that because we'll be working on some more sewing stuff that I will need uh, need more leaders for so I, I really I'm really having fun with that. But I just need to sit down and get some more supplies ready, more fabric cut. And since we'll have a few more minutes tonight, I thought I'd chop a few more up. It is about time that we um, turn them into half square triangles though too, because uh, they're just sewn right now. So maybe we'll cut a bunch of fabric and Maybe there'll be time to cut them in half again. That might have to be like a Saturday project where we just move that along to the next step, literally just to empty my basket again. And uh, that'd, that'd be nice. Feels good to get some of these 
random little projects done on the weekend. Like how I um I repaired um those shoes last weekend. So just like little little projects like that that move something along. Um feels good. I guess it's kind of an extension. That idea is an extension of my finish it Fridays. Like I I'm just getting the urge lately to finish things up again. Not have so many unfinished projects around. Yeah, Sue, I just, um, Sue says, great idea making half square blocks. I just feel like it's a magic quilt. Like I kind of, I call it my magic quilt because I'm, I'm literally making it as I make something else. Cause it's just like my stopper, my ender or leader for, for the sewing machine. Um, something that I have, that I'm doing anyway, right? So I'm, I'm getting use out of it. So I'm pretty happy about that. Use out of that extra little motion of, um, of sewing, sewing something on the machine. Well, we're going to definitely run out of this thread soon. I think we're going to be cutting it really close for, um, you know, we have the other set of three strands this length, which is pretty long, but still. With all these um, single chain stitches, it doesn't really get us that far. They take up a lot of thread. Oh, so Sue says um, she uses Thread Heaven, but she ran out. Oh yeah, so uh, did you get? Did you end up getting some of this then? I, I'm really liking it. Although I haven't used many thread conditioners, so I don't really have much to compare it to except just like the beeswax thing that I've that I've used for a while. Oh, memory quilt. Yeah, it is. Um, it is just out of old clothing. I, I am. I mean, I feel like I'm recycling. I feel like I'm making something. It's an extra magic quilt because, first of all, I'm making something out of nothing because it's old clothing that you know probably couldn't even be worn. Um, it would have probably just been garbage. Um, so something out of nothing, and I'm making it out of nothing time too. Except for you know, I, I it does take time to process all these blocks like it does take time for me to um, trim them and sew them all together and, and all that but the initial act of sewing them together is magic time because it's only when I'm working on another project and I use them as as like the leaders and enders but yeah I'm, I'm definitely feeling it's time to move some of these old projects forward a little bit. Like I've been thinking about that knit lamb that I'm working on too, that Pearl Soho um, fun knit um, sheep. Man, I really want to move that project forward too. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm feeling the need to clean up and uh, reboot, I think is really what the issue is. And, and um, doing it via projects is I guess the way I do that. Oh, Colleen asks, am I going to take my regular, my normal, my like, um, the 70s, basically, the 70s Kenmore for a repair? Uh, I did see, uh, I should do that this weekend, maybe. I did see a video that someone posted in a in a vintage Kenmore Facebook group that I'm in. <laughs> There's a Facebook group for, for everything. Uh, but they had something similar where the feed dogs would keep getting pushed down. And oh, I'm going to I saved the video. I'm going to have to look it up again. But there was a solution of like tightening something. And I didn't really see. I mean, I, I dug around in my machine beforehand and I couldn't really figure it out. So I don't know where they're tightening, but um, I'm going to try this fix that this person did. If I can find that video again and see if that works. But yeah, otherwise I'm going to have to bring it in. I just haven't done stuff like that since COVID. So, so I don't know. Um, in theory, I will be bringing it, bringing it there. I also want to check out 
my grandma's sewing machine that that I think is from the 60s. I think we thought it was from the 60s. I'll have to look it up. It's a like a 60s singer. Um, it's a fun color. It's it's like that. Maybe it's from the 70s. It's it's that like 70s orange and cream kind of get together. That one has more problems than I've dealt with before as well. Ooh, I might not have enough thread here. Uh, so I'd like to dig into that one too and see if I can look up something to fix it. Uh, otherwise, I'll probably bring, if need be, if I can't figure out either, then I'll bring them both um, to the shop at the same time. I'd like to figure it out myself because then I don't have to go anywhere, <laughs> which I'm trying not to do. And um, it's always kind of neat when you can figure out a repair yourself. But those two particular repairs, I've never done anything like either of those. So um, the um, my grandma's sewing machine, the timing on it is off. So like the bobbin moves differently than the, the top. So the needle hits like the bobbin case somehow. Um, so that's that's well beyond anything I've done, but you know, I might be able to find some info on that and putz around, see if I can figure it out. But yeah, I'm going to have to dig into both of those a little bit soon. Cause I would love to, um, I mean, I love using my, my black, um, Kenmore here from, um, 1938. Uh, I mean, I love using that. It's fun. It just feels special stitching on it. But yeah, there's more flexibility with um, the 70s sewing machine, the one that I'm used to using the most. Um, so yeah, I definitely like to get that back up and working. I have used it since it's been broken for, um, for free motion quilting. That it works great because, you know, I just need the the base or the the feed dogs down and it stays down all right i'm using that huga smell so this is my last last piece of thread from the skein and this is the last little area i think we did about this much so i think i'm literally gonna end up with like zero thread left um <laughs> <laughs> so this is like an exact one skein uh, project if if you uh, manage to do it exactly exactly like this. But I'm I'm playing mega thread chicken, that's for sure. All right, there we go. Fuzzle, get out of here. Ooh, this one smells good too. All right. So I don't think this is discolored. Uh, Sue says, I think she tried beeswax. And if um, she says, I think I tried beeswax. And if I recall, for some reason, I didn't like it. I don't use anything with resin or color to it. I think it discolors my thread. Um, that's a good point. That's something I'll keep a lookout for if I test test more. Um, these are definitely not colored. It's still it's still the the beeswax color, um, which I'm guessing this is mostly made out of. So yeah, we got beeswax, coconut oil, and some fragrant fra fragrance, which will be oil based as well, most likely. Okay, weaving the ends. So Marie likes the Thread Magic as well. Oh wait, Thread Heaven or Thread Magic? Are those the same? Is that the same thing? Is Thread Heaven what it used to be and then they went out of business and then it became Thread Magic? Like someone else did it up or I don't know. Or are those two completely different things? Thread Heaven and Thread Magic. I'm actually gonna write both of them down right now because I'm gonna forget one and then not the other or something, so. Thread heaven and thread magic. All right. Always good to have a, a little notepad nearby. <laughs> All 
All right. Last of the little cute little lavenders here. Okay, so a couple of you guys said yes, so that's that's a yes to that Thread Heaven is the one that went away and then Thread Magic came after. I'll look for both. I remember like a year or a couple of years ago it being a really big deal because everyone was using Thread Heaven or whatever it was and then then they didn't know what to use afterwards. Okay, so Thread, okay, Gina says, Thread Heaven is out of business, Thread Magic then came out. As far as I can tell, it's the same. Oh, okay. So, okay, so it's, it's so, all right, so it is the Thread Heaven that went out of business. Yep, I, re I remember there was a, a huge oh no from, from the community <laughs> um, when, when that happened, because I think uh, a lot of people really liked that. So, okay, so no Thread Heaven, but Thread Magic, so I will, I'll look for that too. Might as well have another little little guy around. Uh, like I said, they're the perfect size just to kind of throw in with different projects. And and I'm really enjoying using using this one. This is still beeswax, so I've heard like thread thread heaven or thread magic, that's that's a little different, isn't it? Guess we'll have to see. I will um I'll maybe order that right when we're done here. Oh, I'll show um let's let's take a look at all all these blocks too before we finish up today. I'd like to kind of lay them out, see where we're at. We're we're past the halfway point now. This is um this is block 7. Gosh, that means we're halfway through the over halfway through the year too. Crazy. Just reading your comments on the on the thread heaven. Yeah, I'll I'll grab some of that too. And if there's ever and ever anything else you guys want me to try out or test different ones, let me know. It's kind of fun. So Kathy says there's someone, um, Robot Mom sews, sells a thread gloss that's similar. Okay, interesting. We'll start with the thread magic and um, see if I can find that. Oh, okay, so Gina says that the thread magic is like a silicone type substance. Huh, that's interesting. Huh, I wonder... I wonder what the archivalness of that would be. I mean, not that this is anything either, but I feel like it's a. I feel like with you know beeswax and coconut oil, I guess it maybe feels more natural than a silicone-based thing. But I guess, I guess I don't know what I'm talking about either. Oh, beater. So Deborah says Thread Heaven was the only thread conditioner that that beaters used um, back years ago. Ooh, I that kind of brings me back. I never use a thread conditioner, but and I, I'm sure by beaters, I'm sure that means something different than than it initially does in my head. But I used to do like tons of like loom beading, and I have all these beads still, and I did some bead embroidery. Um, on like leather, <laughs> uh, that would be kind of fun to bring bring the beads out again. I think we've talked about that a little bit. Like we should try and embroider with some fancy things like sequins or beads or something. Two or three more kind of bloopy rows here. Let's 
assuming I have enough floss. We're going to make this be enough floss. There are going to be some spaced out stitches if I'm getting low up at the top here. Okay, so Rebecca says that the silicone um, thread conditioner, uh, the silicone does not leave any residue on the floss. Well, that's interesting because there's definitely, I mean, this is a beeswax base, so it definitely feels like you've waxed, um, waxed your thread. Oh, interesting. Kathy says, I only use thread conditioner on the end to help thread the floss. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> All those little tricks. I, I definitely have noticed that things aren't knotting up as much as they might have. So that's definitely nice. And just this, it just smells nice. Ooh, Don says I would love to embroider with um, with beads. That'd be fun. I'd have to like relearn. I think the concept in my head uh, is easy enough. Um, yeah, be kind of kind of interesting to try something like that. Dig into some goofy little thing. We are going to be doing something a little special for August's embroidery of the month. So I'm I'm kind of excited about that. I'm going to do a test of it. Um, do like the test stitching um, and writing instructions for it uh, on Friday, I think but we'll see how that goes. Oh, interesting. So it says on their site for the thread heaven, I'm guessing, um, that it's the, the silicone is acid free and non-toxic. <laughs> interesting. Now I'm like way curious about that as a product and how it's made and all that. I'm gonna have to dig in some more for sure. All right, I'm gonna get a last little row up top here with some of them popping up over the over the top. Then we're done with the block. I don't think I'm gonna iron it either. I'm gonna wait till all the blocks are done. I'm not gonna even, I'm not gonna trim it either. It could probably use a little bit of a trim, but I'm not gonna deal with any of that till, till later as well. Cause I'm sure some of the other blocks probably need a trim too. We'll do it all at once, if at all. Oh, Gina, Gina put up the link for Thread, uh, Thread Magic if anyone's interested over on Facebook. Well, that's kind of a little guy I put up there, but that's fine. I didn't want it going too far over the, the horizon line here. Oops, I almost lost my thread there. That means I'm getting low. I usually accidentally pull my thread out of the needle when I'm getting lower. But we only have a few stitches left. We have plenty for that. Yeah, this took exactly a skein of thread just about. So that's why I said two skeins, just because if you put these any more dense, uh, dense uh, than I did, then, then you'll need the extra skein. Yep, Barbara, I think I'm gonna, um, I, I won this battle. Just, just won though. <laughs> yeah, I could have probably, I mean, I'm gonna get two more stitches here and then I probably could have gotten like maybe four more stitches. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we cut it pretty dang close here. with this one. Oh, good, Marlene. Marlene says she got her package today. Oh, I'm so happy you like it. I will, um, I will be shipping more out tomorrow. So if you ordered, order something today, it'll, it'll be headed out tomorrow. 
um, I think I'll be at the warehouse on Thursday as well. So if you order um, today through Thursday morning, um, your your guy will ship ship before then. All right, just weaving in. That's it. I have like six inches of thread left here. That's pretty close for a whole project to just have this left on a skein. <laughs> All right, you guys. So let's let's check it out. Okay, so there is my finished Tuscany block. And I'm going to just shimmy some stuff off of the table here for a sec. I want to see what all of the other blocks, um, see what this kind of looks like all, all together here. So, okay, let's grab the blocks. Oh, they look fun together already. Okay, I'm, I'm excited. So, geez, I have a bunch of stuff around here. Time to clean up again. I guess it's the end of a project. That's usually, usually when, um, when it's the messiest everywhere. Okay, I'm getting really high up here just so I can kind of lay out these as best I can. Obviously, these are very large blocks. They're, they're 12, they're 12 and a half inches right now. Man, I wonder if I should, I wonder ultimately if I'm going to put sashing in or not. I mean, it might be nice just sewn right next to each other. I don't know. Ooh, they are fun though. Ah, look at it come together. It's so colorful already. And the gray I think is really already just even with the three here, um, is really kind of pulling it all together. Ooh, I'm, I'm happy with these. Oh, they're so fun. Look at this. It looks like a big moon above the mountains here. Ooh, I might have to do these two together, uh, like that. I think that's fun. All right. And then we have this one. And we have one more, so this little, oops, <laughs> the iPad's talking to me. Uh, we have one more to squeeze in here, so we're up to seven. But they're looking awesome together, you guys. I, I haven't looked at them out like this yet. Um, I'm excited. This is looking cool. I wish I could fit this guy in. Let's just shimmy these all up. I want to just see with um, one more in there. There, we'll put him right there. <laughs> Ooh, that's really graphic. That's that's pretty. Um, I like all these lines here. Um, all right, you guys, it's coming together. This is gonna be really fun. All right, I'm I'm super stoked. Uh, this is the order that they go into. So this is January. I believe this is the order. February, um, March, April, May. June's and July. Oh, and my mom did decide to start working on these. <laughs> she wasn't sure if she was going to, I think. Um, oh, she, I, I think she started a few, actually. She did this one, um, but she's doing the all the stitching on, on this one, too. I'll have to see if she started, started uh, mine yet or not. But there we go. We got seven. Uh, it's going to be pretty large. Uh, that was half of them. So what? I mean, that's 36 inches. So 36 by like 48, right? Um, well, that's a pretty small, that's a, like a lap quilt. We have to get a big border. I don't know. I kind of like them mashed together. I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want sashing in between them. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to wait till they're all done, but I'm excited to see what colors come next, you know, like green, uh, this was orange based, you know, obviously like the pink based, the blue based. Uh, I'm curious to see what next month is going to be. Uh, so next month will be on the 15th, um, the 15th of August. So that's when we'll work on this project again. But we have a little bit of time here left and I would love uh, <laughs> if you guys humored me a little bit by just uh, letting me cut more of this fabric. Like, like I said, so I can show you these too. Um, I don't know why this guy got in here, but 
I have, ooh, that guy too. Man, time to clean up again. But I have a bunch of darks. So these are, these is what I'm, this is what I'm considering dark and I'm considering um, that, that green dot, the lights. Cause a lot of times in half square triangles, you want a dark side and a light side. Uh, so these are all done, I believe. Ugh, yeah, so these all need to be cut up. And I think where I left this is I ran out of, oh look, these are cut in, cut in half already. So these ones are already to be pressed. Keep those separate. I think I'm to the point that I'm out of that light colored, colored one. But as you can see, it's taking up my basket. I want this basket just to be filled with, um, my fabric pieces that I can just grab. And so I've been just kind of throwing them back in when I'm done, trying to stack them nicely, but when it gets to be too much, it's, it gets in the way. So yeah, all of these are done. So we'll have to trim, trim these up. This will make a whole pile of these larger, larger pieces. And these ones I've already cut. I'm gonna actually just kind of keep that in a stack on the side. So yeah, so I have a ton of, I mean, not a ton, but I do have a bit of the darks. So I would like to get more of the lights and then we'll um, cut more of these later. But let me show you. And then I, I literally keep a stack of darks and a stack of lights here. And I have this kind of hanging on my table. And then I just grab one of the lights and one of the darks, put them together. And I, and I sew that instead of sewing a leader um, when I'm on the sewing machine. And I ran out, so I've been using my leaders for a while, and that annoys me because I wanna, I wanna be um, moving ahead in, in this project. But here are the rest of these blocks. Let me just lay these all out. Uh, but see, these are kind of even, the darks are going in different directions right now. So you can make like, we can make these weird, weird kind of um, patterns by just twisting these in, in different directions and stuff, I think. Like let's put all the darks like towards the center. And then we got this kind of like weird um, shape going like with these kind of these flying geese units there. That's kind of cool. Let's see how many of these do I have? I'm just gonna plop them down. But yeah, so eventually this is going to be just a magic quilt. And I think this will be fun as just, you know, just a lap quilt laying around somewhere. Okay, it looks like that's what I have done. So I have nine, I have nine squares uh, done so far on this. But like I said, magic quilt. Uh, and this is going to make quite a few more, more of these squares, I believe. So, and this, what just amazes me, like this was a Hawaiian shirt right here. Like we got little <laughs> Hawaiian flowers and stuff on it. Um, but yeah, it just, it's all out of nothing because this is all fabric that would have just been thrown away. And I feel like it, it doesn't take much, doesn't take much fabric to have a quilt either. But yeah, so I just have, I have this, just a shoe box that's filled with, um, old shirts from ages and ages ago. Um, these are my scraps. I could probably throw those away maybe, but, um, and then I have just this white that when this runs out, then I'll, you know, use something else for a light colored part. But I would like to see if I can chop some more squares out of here. And it looks like it's pretty even, like I can just fold it. You know what? I'm not even going to press it. It's totally fine. So I'm gonna just, I think, make my um, mat extra long here. Get a good fold on here. And uh, I think these are three inch uh, pieces that I'm cutting. So I should probably check that, huh? Yeah, three inch by three inch. That's not really, a typical size. I think if I would do this again, I'd probably do them either five inches or two and a half inches because that's, those are like normal, normal cuts of fabric, you know? Um, that's like, um, 
what are those called? A charm pack and uh, a... Oh, what are the five inch cuts called? I forget. So yeah, Colleen, I'm using, I'm using three inch squares. I don't know. I just, I don't know what made me decide that, but yeah, again, if I were, if I were to do it again, I would do it a normal pre-cut size. Oh, let's flip this around. But yeah, so I'm going to just chop a whole bunch of three inch pieces here and um, find my cutting glove. Here we go. Got my second ruler here. Rotor cutter. But yeah, I'm gonna just cut a bunch of three inch cuts and then I will cross cut them to, to three inch square. So I'm just getting rid of this crazy edge that I have here. Um, I've folded it here and I, I'm putting that fold on a line. So when I unfold these, they should be they shouldn't be like all wonky, we'll see. That's true, Colleen says that I like the three inches to start. It's a nice size uh, once sewn and trimmed. Yeah, that's true. They, I mean, it, yeah, if I was doing this with a two and a half inch um, square, it would end up being pretty dang small once it's sewn into a triangle. Gosh, maybe I, Maybe I did three inches just because I have this three inch ruler and it's easy to just um, do the size of the ruler. Maybe that's maybe that's my reason. I, I don't know. I started this a while ago and like I said, I only work on it when you know when I'm when I run out of stuff like this, like I, I'm, I'm working on it special today, but I only sew it when I'm sewing another project and I just throw it in the bin. This will actually get me a lot. Um, this is a nice big piece of fabric. This had to be a blanket. I don't know what this was. It feels familiar to me, but I don't know why. This might have been like sheets when I was like a like really little, <laughs> like in elementary school or something. That might be where where this fabric is from. I'm not quite positive. All I know is that it feels familiar, and I don't quite know why. guys out of the way. And all the all the other shirts that I'm using feel familiar too, but I can't quite place them either. I have just a bin of old clothes um, in the basement. And I'm like, ooh, I'll make this quilt and I'll use up tons of tons of fabric from that bin. It doesn't look like I've even affected anything in that bin. It's crazy. It does not take much fabric to make make a quilt. That's that's for sure. I'm kind of pushing this little one here, but we're going to do it anyway. So none, of the, I mean, like, I'm not being super perfect with these either. They are going to get cut down later. So I'm not worrying too much about it. But there we go. Let's just do that many. We'll come back to this at some other point. But we're getting close to done with that uh, that green. Okay. I think let's just fold up again. Gonna keep these like this. I'm just kind of keeping the edges sort of matched. Then I'm gonna put. Um, we'll just get however many we get out of out of this. But I'm gonna start. I'm gonna leave them doubled up, and I'm gonna just start on the trim the edge, and then just cut three inches till I'm done. And I'll probably do a couple, couple rows of rows of them. I mean, this one is super wonky, so we will cross over this edge right here. Actually, I might put this one on top because I think I'm going to double layer these. There, like this one we'll put right on top of this one. It's kind of thick. This might be some sort of flannel. So 
So, um, Colleen, wait, no, uh, Denise says, if you piece the back, you'll use a lot of your fabric. So that's what I've been doing on my quilts lately, is I'll just save all of the little scraps, and I will, um, make the back out of all those little scraps. That's why I'm not done with the I Love Home quilt yet. Um, I'm gonna try putting this on top. Uh... Because I'm piecing it, I'm like improv piecing it all from um, tiny little, tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces. But yeah, I, I like the idea that all the fabric, like, like if I'm using a fat quarter, I like that the fabric is all being used up by one quilt. I think that's kind of interesting. So if I don't use it on the front, it'll be part of the back. I do kind of find that interesting but at some point it's like okay do I need to save every scrap sometimes it feels just as good to get rid of it than it would be to you know have it yelling at you in the background of like why aren't you sewing me all right Ugh, this feels good I'm gonna be able to make some more leader or make some more um these half square triangles again. This will get me a little farther. Now that I'm thinking of it, I don't think this will get me all that. This won't last too long. But once I get done with these, it's got to be time to cut the other ones in half, I think. I'm getting a little too many of them done. This would be like a weekend project, I think. Just because all of these, all of these are first going to have to get cut in half. So you cut in half on the diagonal and that leaves you with like, you know, it would be like, like this. It would leave you with two half square triangles. You cut on the diagonal and then you got, you know, a half square triangle on this side and then another on this side. But you got to press all these. So I would have to press all these open and then I'm trimming them. I think I am trimming them to two and a half inches. So they end up being two and a half inches um, once they're done. But that takes, that's a long process. It is a long process cutting a whole stack of these, pressing a whole stack of them and um, trimming them like, in, like hours, hours and hours and hours. So <laughs> I should probably move that along. But that's not really, well, actually, you know what? Once I have all of these trimmed, I could just start sewing them together. Like how I am, how I have the full blocks, I could start sewing them together as my leaders. So really, um, I was thinking, oh, I'll still need more leaders though. More of these um, while I, you know, even if I'm working on trimming and cutting the others, but yeah, once they are all trimmed, I can just start sewing blocks together. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that. So one of these days I gotta uh, trim, press, and or, or cut, trim, and press all these. Cut, press, then trim. That's the order. But for now we're getting a decent stack of these. So these look, all look like I can get one more out of it. So let's unfold. Oh, again, thank you guys for sticking with me for this. This is like, I feel like a weight lifted off of me, which is just so silly from something like this, but I do just feel like, okay, good. This is revamped again and I can get back on this. It, it feels like a step. You know, one of those tasks that has been on your list for like ages and uh, it's just so stupid, but you're, you're still not doing that task. Um, and then finally when you do it, it's like about time and it feels really good and you should have done it a bajillion years ago. <laughs> it's a little bit how I feel about this. Ugh, puzzles. All right, I'm going to just use the mat. There, I think we'll just not keep these scraps. Like I said, at some point I just got to get rid of them. So, all right. Here we go, we got, yeah, exactly. Every step is is progress, uh, Amy, I, I, I agree. 
So, all right, we have um, a stack of darks and a stack of lights. I think these are actually thicker. They're kind of squishy. I think they're they're um, flannel, and these are just normal, like, shirting fabric. So oh, this will give me a little bit. Then, like I said, one of these days I will trim all of these, and then at that point I will have a whole pile. Like, once this, these are trimmed and pressed, I'll have a whole pile of perfect little squares that I can, instead of sewing these together, I can just start sewing sewing squares together on the sewing machine. Like this can be my leader, just sewing sewing um, one thing like this. Kind of like how we're doing with the, the granny squares quilt, how I'm always trying to have something on the machine. This will be the next thing on the machine. So, okay, I feel good about that. But again, some processing to do before before I get that far. But for the time being, I do have these. I think we'll put these. I'm trying to fit all of these in, in here at once, but I'll just leave them out. All right, you guys, I think that's about it. Um, again, tomorrow, we'll, just so I can show you where it's the right orientation yet, this is what we'll be starting tomorrow, the fabric-only scissors. Um, so uh, if you just got the pattern, be sure to print it out. We I'll show you how to trace the design tomorrow um but also uh i have that fabrisol v the or i mean the stick and stitch sticker that we'll put on as as well so i'll show you how to do it if you don't have that stick and stitch sticker that comes with the bundle um so i'll show you how to do that but then i think i'll ultimately use that that stick and stitch all right you guys i'm gonna flip you around we'll call it an evening here okay so let's uh take one last look at the orophil block again I always think it's kind of nice to see it from far away so we still we still are really seeing that striping of the gray that I'm using that gray fabric has a bunch of just silly kind of different colored stripes in and <laughs> it is really dark on, on these two and then light on here but I think that's kind of fun I'm, I'm liking that variation so I'm really happy with it I still like all those flowers in that white. I was not expecting to do something like that. But yay, you guys, I'm really happy with it. And I hope you had fun uh, sewing and stitching it as well. I'm excited to see what uh, August is going to be. <sighs> it's going to be August soon, you guys. <laughs> all right. Well, again, we'll be working on the uh, uh, fabric scissors tomorrow. Uh, check out the shop if you want to get the bundle for that, and I'll be shipping them out tomorrow. I'll be over at the warehouse. So, awesome. Thanks again, guys. Have a good evening. Good night.